So welcome back to Bandajad and today um, is a request. Now I get asked quite a few times um, if I can weather without using the airbrush. I'm never sure if that's a question or a challenge, but anyway, challenge accepted. So today uh, is going to be this day pole tanker, which I've just realised has got a buff I'm missing. But anyway, I'll fit that later on. So I'm going to take the wheels off first, as you've seen. Uh, we need to weather them separately. And I think the first thing that I want to do is to get some dirt underneath the bottom of the tanker, so just in, in there, uh, underneath the tank, where uh, no one's ever going to go and give it a clean. So we will use um, just some random shade of brown. And I'm not going to make a list of the colours or put these in the descriptions. Um, they are just what they, uh, you know, what they are. You just use whatever you will you choose. So these are just colours that I've just pulled from the shelf that kind of fit. Now obviously that's not brown. That's grey. There's the brown. So I wanted it a kind of more of a mud, um, greasy, grimy colour. And I didn't have the exact uh, shade on the shelf I wanted. So we'll just mix this around a little bit. And uh, we're going to use this. Now obviously you can just use, um, you know, a really dark, we want a really dark sort of black, or you can just go completely wild with your rust tones. Um, but this is just the colour I've chosen to use today to demonstrate this. Uh, I'm going to mix this down a little bit. I want it a little bit more runny than uh, usual. Obviously with the airbrush it goes on finer with the brush it's going to go on a lot thicker so we need to water it down a little bit and this is just plain water in there nothing special you can use thinners obviously if you want to and we're just going to dab that on underneath there underneath the belly of that tank just in the uh, dark recesses and, and we're just doing the bottom half we're not going to worry about the uh, the top part at the moment Once that's on, we need to uh, pop it off, basically. So the the idea is, is that it gets cleaned away by you know the rain and uh, you know passing a a tree or something. So it may uh, sort of brush alongside of the tank, or someone may clean it with a with a broom or whatever the case is. But they're never going to get all the bits and pieces out. There's going to be lots of this grime stuck there in the uh, in the recesses. So we're going to wait for that to dry a little bit more and we'll just carry on around the other side. And you can see I'm using my, my best brush here. Um, really. And then this one is uh, um, completely, obviously he's had it so um, here we're just using this just to brush back, sort of get into the recesses a bit more and uh, brush as much as I can away. I've also used uh, later on after this uh, off camera, I've used a, a, a short, uh, a softer brush and that's just kind of uh, smoothed the edges off a little bit more. Um, apparently I forgot to film that bit so uh, my apologies. But you can use cotton bud or uh, like I say, a, a brush or a, um, a bit of rolled up cloth, whatever you choose. Just the idea is to get um, a lot of this uh, this paint up there. I did use the brush after all. Is to, uh, yeah, just to get rid of as much of the paint you can, soften the edge up a little bit. We don't want a harsh line um, where it goes you know, from clean to dirty. And we need to go around all of the uh, of the wagon, all four sides, to do that. Obviously, and also what I did off camera again, um, which I certainly didn't film, was just to um, just to scratch back a little bit on the on the logo glow along the side, uh, just to uh, just to make that look a little bit. Um, more weathered and then I'm painting on the colour the same brown on the wheels as well so our next stage is to um, 
add some rust to the top of this uh, this tanker. Now um, we're going to use uh, four colours. Um, we'll show three for now. Three are just different shades of uh, um, rust tones, whatever colour you decide to use. So this is, we've got a mid brown there. We've got a orange rust colour, and then there's a darker brown there, which is just dark rust. I think this is called. And they are going to be our three uh, prime colours. And we need to lay them on uh, uh, one, one at a time. And we're going to use this sponge. It's part of a makeup sponge. You can use any sponge you like. It's just I'm going to have these to hand. And they're quite um, sort of small and manageable. But if you've got a bit of a kitchen sponge, just rip a piece of that off and use that. We don't want a, um, a sort of clean edge. So uh, you need to make it, if you can, um, sort, of, sort of rough edge so that it gives them more of a random effect. So we use starting with the lighter colour first, the uh, the bright orange rust, and um, it's you know, fairly fairly dry. We've, we've taken most of the paint off. You can see in the middle of the palette, and we're just going to dot it around and make some sort of pattern. Uh, there'll be some areas where it will run more sort of towards the edges, um, and we just need to say pat that around. Try and rotate the sponge if you can from time to time. Otherwise, you will end up with some kind of pattern starting to form. So just twist the sponge around to use a different edge uh, occasionally. And if you use the dry part of the sponge, it will just soften up the edge as well. So that's what we're doing. They're just twisting it around, just trying to become, uh, give it more of a random effect. And it's going to look a bit weird to start with, but. Uh, as we add further layers, it will uh, you'll obviously see the effect. So some of the bits we're uh, not going to be able to get to with the sponge; it's just a bit too big. So we're um, we're just using a fine brush, and we're just going to try and sort of emulate that sponged effect. Just sort of dabbing it in really gently. So on to the next colour. So the next uh, stage of brown, so the mid sort of tone. And then we're going to add that as well. And we're going to do less of this one. So uh, so that, that bright orange rust will show through. Um, so we're not going as far down the body with this particular one. And when we've done uh, with airbrush as well. Exactly the same as that. But... Um, this time's obviously with a sponge. Try not to get too much paint on your sponge at a time. It's easier to add more than it is to uh, than it is to take it off. Keep rotating the sponge and uh, getting that random effect. If it's too much, you know, you can always take a little bit off, I guess, and then uh, then reapply it. But it's just easier to not have to reapply that. So again, the bits we can't get to, we're just touching gently with the uh, with the brush, and then soften back a little bit with the edge of the sponge, just so it sort of blends in a bit more. And then our final shade uh, of brown. This is the darker tone, and we'll do an even less. So this goes uh, less down the side of the of the tanker, mainly sitting on the top. Just a little bit will encroach down the side of the of the tanker. Again, remember to rotate the sponge um, to get that sort of random effect. Otherwise, that's like you're wheeling up your pattern, and it'll be very obvious what you've been up to. So you can see the effect that we've got is the is the darker colours being the smaller patch at the top. So that's the um, the sort of older rust, the the orange, the bright orange rust is where it's just run down the side, and uh, the darker rust is where it's all sort of emanated from, and that's the effect we're trying to achieve. doing 
just much on the end. Uh, these tend to, um, well, the pictures I've seen anyway, along the edges, they seem to obviously wear the join and get a bit of a build up of uh, the rust sort of, uh, sort of seems to be more uh, more rusty there. So yes, yeah, so I'm trying to have a little darker patch around the edge of the, uh, of the tank. So we're adding in a bit of black uh, into the darkest of the uh, of the browns. I'm just going to touch a little bit of that on, just really to add just a little final shade to the top of the tanker. So uh, we're going to use the clean part of a of a new sponge just to blend that in a little bit more. We don't want this showing. This will just stand out. Um, if it's uh, if it's not blended in too well, just make sure just use dabbing's. Um, Sort of motion don't try to brush because if you do you will uh, start to drag the, the paint off because it's it's going to be still quite uh, soft at this stage and again little uh, little parts where that does happen you can just touch that in with uh, with the color and uh, just gently gently blend that in So with our um, our old knackered brush, um, we're using the lightest of the rust colours for this, and we're just going to add in. Oops, um, use the wrong wrong sponge. Then um, we're just going to add in a few little dots of uh, of rust, just to uh, just to add a bit more interest in another layer. Just need to be really gentle with this, and uh, definitely need to make sure you uh, you rotate the brush, not so you don't end up getting pattern because you will uh, you will get pattern. Don't need to do this uh, this stage or if you've got a different type of sponge, a much coarser sponge you could use that or um, crumpled up um, kitchen foil or you can just use a very fine brush and you can just place these little rust marks um, very precisely if you choose to do that. So we need to work on the on the chassis now. I think the print top is pretty much uh, done for now and See, we've got that uh, orange rust still in there. We're just going to put some water in there, mix it down, and just uh, oh, that's a bit um, that's a bit heavier than I imagined it was going to be. But um, we're just going to brush it on, and then we're going to wipe it off. It's just going to catch in the recesses, and um, it doesn't really matter. It's that that thick anyway, but it will come off. We're going to get rid of most of that now. We're just going to dab it back. side as well and I'll make sure it gets in all the all the recesses it's, it's the uh, the raised bits that we're gonna sort of clean off so any of the paint that you want to remain needs to be in those all recesses we'll fit our wheels back on now And then our final stage is our rust powders, or our different weathering powders that we've got. And we're in our um, palette there, there's there's a different rust tones. There's our dark earth from Humbrol, and also chrome oxide, which is the green, mouldy sort of algae colour. So we mix in that with the um, with the dark earth, and this gives this sort of just this. Yeah, it looks like it's been sitting out in a in a field for uh, 30 years, sort of effect. Be very careful with this uh, chrome, chrome oxide if you do use this green because um, it is very bright and once you've got it on it's a nightmare to get off so really just go very very delicately and uh, mix it in with the uh, with the other colors it's, it's so difficult to 
to fix once you've got it on and if you've got it on neat green it's really really awkward to disguise or to uh, to remove so just be aware if you do use that but you don't need to use this chrome oxide I actually quite like it at the moment so uh, so it's in the palette and I just use the touch for here from time to time just around the top around these um, these vents or whatever they uh, they may well be just adding a bit of the extra um, this is a light rust um, weathering powder just touch it in around the top and also we've got dark rust in there so we add a little touch of that on in a second there we go and that's pretty much it don't forget we need to do the ends I need to replace that um, buffer but there it is it's done um, so finally uh, weathering a wagon without using an airbrush so there's a first for me um, hope you enjoyed this one today and um, thanks for watching and we'll see you again very soon at Bunter's Yard <laughs>